Hey guys, so if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, you'll see that we posted a picture recently of a new uh, solvent line that we've found. A lot of you guys have asked what we use to clean our weapons. Uh, we have been searching, I'm kind of old school, so I've been using like Hobbies number nine for the last 30 some odd years. Well, uh, that stuff smells really bad, as a lot of you guys probably know, and you don't really want to keep it on your hands all the time. So uh, in searching, I've come across these guys. This is TCS Manufacturing. This is their solvent. This stuff is non-toxic. It really has no odor whatsoever. So if you're actually cleaning in the house or whatever the case may be, you're not going to have any problems with fumes from this. Um, like I said, you can get this on your hands, anything like that, and it's not going to bother you. Uh, this is their lubricant. This stuff is, it, it, there's no really, it's not really water-based. This stuff is very uh very slick um, if you rub some on your hands one of the little demonstrations that they give you take a drop put it on your fingers and then they give you a paper towel and you, you dab on it and they tell you to dab again you rub your fingers together you can still feel it um, and like i said i've been testing it for the last few months this stuff is really really good it works really well so they have several different kits we're going to show you uh, in this video we're going to use their pistol clean kit and everything you need comes in this one kit. The gun we're going to be using in this video, this is an HK USP Compact 45. And we're going to clean this up for you guys and uh, see how it does. All right, guys. So we are getting ready to begin. Uh, I do have gloves on, but like I said in the intro, this stuff is non-toxic. You don't have to worry about getting it on your hands and stuff. Um, really, I'm wearing gloves. I don't want to get the carbon and stuff on my hands and under my fingernails, stuff like that. So try to wear gloves when I can. So let's go ahead and we'll break this USP down and we'll get started. Now this has had several hundred rounds of uh, suppressed shooting through it. So it's going to be fairly dirty, but um, it shouldn't be anything crazy to contend with here. So I'm just going to set frame off to the side for now. And there is quite a bit of carbon buildup you can see here on the, uh, the breech and the feed ramp and stuff here, and as well as inside of the frame here. So we'll go ahead and we'll put a little solvent on there and let it start doing its work. And this is the TCS solvent here. Like I said, this stuff really has no smell or anything like that. And what you'll get in the actual kit is this is their... Uh, pistol cleaning kit here and really everything you need uh, comes on this kit you just need to you know specify what caliber or whatever you're going to be using so you get the solvent and you get the lubricant you get the cleaning rod um, their bore paste this stuff is really uh, really good stuff uh, you get the clean rod the brush patches pretty much everything we're going to need here so I'm going to go ahead and Put a little bit of this solvent. Maybe one that's open, huh? All right. I got a little bottle, bottle here that's already open. Go ahead and I'm just gonna put a little solvent in there. And let it start breaking some of this carbon down. All right, so I've had this on for, I don't know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, something like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the brush here just to knock, just knock a little bit of this loose carbon and unburnt powder and stuff like that out of here. And no need to go overboard. Um, I know a lot of you guys have asked us in messages and comments how often should you clean your gun and stuff like that. Um, we're real good at giving advice, but we're really bad at following that advice. Uh, a lot of times we'll go uh, thousands of rounds on certain guns without cleaning them. So, but uh, generally, I mean, there's a lot of people online 
that say they never clean their guns, stuff like that. Uh, I'm not one of those. I believe you should maintain uh, what you're using to protect your life with. Um, I'm a fan of trying to maintain that. But, you know, it's the internet, so everyone has an opinion. And I'm going to hit the outside of this just a little bit too, up here around the muzzle end. Always like to get a lot of carbon build up on there. But we'll let this set for a second and we'll wipe that out. I'm just going to go ahead and hit this barrel, hit the feed ramp and the breech here. And before I wipe this off, I'll put a little bore paste and uh, we'll run it into the barrel and get all that carbon and unburnt powder out of that as well. Um, back when I first started, uh, you know, buying my own guns when I was really young, uh, I got a 1022 when I was a little kid, which has started my obsession. Uh, but when I started cleaning, um, I was OCD about it, and I would um, just overclean the guns, really, and spend way too much time. You really don't have to do all that uh, to keep your guns maintained and function. So next one I'm going to do, I'm going to get the bore paste out, and uh, we'll put some bore paste down the barrel and uh, clean out all that carbon and number powder. All right, so actually I'm gonna go back on what I just said. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually run a brush through the barrel real quick. And I'll, I'll run that through a couple of times and then we'll hit it with the bore paste. And uh, then I'll hit it with the brush one more time and we'll throw some patches through it, uh, get it all cleaned out through there. I'm gonna put a little solvent in the barrel and a little bit of solvent on my brush. Um, you just don't wanna be running a dry uh, brush down a dry barrel. It's never a good idea, even though we are using synthetic brush here. And you're always wanting to go from the breech to the muzzle, but I do come back through. I'm not going to take this out every single time that I do that. I know that's a big faux pas, um, but I've been doing it this way for uh, 30 some years. I've never noticed any kind of you know, degradation of my barrel or my accuracy or anything like that. Um, basically what you want to prevent doing is marring the breech or more importantly, the muzzle portion uh, of your barrels. But on a pistol like this, we're not in real uh, much danger of really doing that. On a rifle, it's a little different. It's always use, uh, good to use a, a bore guide on there. And on a rifle, I will actually unscrew my brush every time I make a pass, but on a pistol, I'm not really, not that concerned about that. So that should be pretty sufficient. And now what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll get a patch and a jag and I'll show you their jag. Their jag is pretty unique. And it's one of the things I really like about this company. And we'll run a little, uh, other bore paste through here a few times. And then I'll bring the brush back through just to make sure we get everything out of there and we'll clean it up with some patches. All right, so now, like I said, we're going to go ahead and take their jag here. And this is the unique part about uh, their cleaning tools. And one of the, especially when we get into the AR video, which we'll be doing, uh, you'll see, you know, in a few weeks or whatever. Um, these O-rings are unique because they actually hold on to the patch. You can actually scrub back and forth uh, through your barrel without losing, you know, your, your, uh, your swab. And, it, you know, you guys that know, <laughs> if you push through and you pull your jag back out normally, then your swab, your pad's going to stay in there. With these, it actually holds on to it, so you can actually do a back and forth cleaning motion, and it works really well. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and throw this on, the jag on our cleaning rod here. And we'll put that on, and then I'm going to grab a couple of patches. You get little tongue depressors here. 
Um, what that's for is you put a little bit of this uh, bore paste on here and you smear it around. But uh, I really don't use those. I just use my fingers. Um, so, as they say, a little dab do you? So you just put that on and I just rub it around with my finger, like I said. And that should be sufficient. So then we just go ahead, wrap that around our jig. And I'll put my finger over the end. Now, something you will, you don't want to seal this entirely up because these O-rings, obviously, um, with your finger over the end, will create a gap and you can't push this thing in. So you just want to have your finger lightly. Oh, come on now. Do you hear the, you, you hear the air there? So you can bring it back out and you can pull it back this way. And as you can see, that comes with it. Now you can see all the carbon there that actually come off. And we're gonna make a couple passes with this and then I'll, I'll get a new pad and we'll do it again. But you can see it's a very tight fit and I'm gonna hold it here and I'll, I'll let you hear the air in here. You probably heard it pop there. That's it pushing my finger off of it. So bring it to the end like that and then we can pull it back through and you can see how dirty that's getting. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and we'll hit it with one more clean patch. A little more bore paste. This bore paste really, really works well. And uh, we'll show you some more demos of this in later videos um, on choke tubes or uh, BCGs, stuff like that. It really, it really does work well. So we got it to the end. And you could hear the air there. And I just pushed that one all the way through. So now I'm gonna go ahead and throw a brush on. And we'll hit it with a little solvent just to make sure we clean out all of that paste. And I'll hit my brush again with just a little solvent. The paste is pretty dry, so. And we'll just run it through a few times here. Try to get all that out of the rifling. And then I'm going to run a couple of clean pads through it. Put our jack back on. And then when we're done here, uh, we'll get back into the slide in the frame. Now I did put a little solvent here on the frame too, just to let that soak, kind of loosen up a little bit of that solvent. And then once we get this done, we'll wipe off the barrel. And we should be about good to go. Pull that back through here. And you can see that carbon all around the edge still coming out. And I can tell you this pour, this bore paste cleans better than anything I've used. So um, if you're just using some typical solvent, you're not using anything really, really harsh like lead remover or you know carbon remover, you're leaving a lot of that in your bricks. So I'll hit it again. And I'm actually going to Throw a little bit of solvent on this patch. Put that one through a couple times. And you can tell how much cleaner this is coming. Uh, you know, far less carbon on here. And what you'll do is you'll just run those through until those come out clean. And it, if you're using solvent and stuff, uh, a lot of people 
are going to tell you until that comes out clean. There's always going to be something on the, on the, you know, your swabs there. But uh, a lot of that's just going to be a little bit of solvent or, or something like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and run a couple more patches. All right, so I'm going to run one last patch through for you guys. The barrel is pretty well clean, and then we'll go ahead and wipe it all down. And if you clean your guns pretty often, you'll know that is a pretty nice sight. It's a pretty clean patch right there. But I am going to actually run this through in reverse one time too. Now, I really wouldn't do this with a real dirty patch, but this one is so clean, I decided to run it through backwards here. And that is a clean bar barrel, boys and girls. This, uh, <clears throat> the bore paste um, really works really well. And like I said, this had hundreds of suppressed ammo shot through it. This barrel is going to be, it, it's extremely clean now, I can assure you. But I'm just going to go ahead and grab microfiber. Uh, this is typically what I use as opposed to any kind of cotton or anything like that. And I'm just going to go ahead, you can see, just from the solvent that we had setting on here we brushed around really does a good job at cleaning up this barrel and I always like to get down in the lugs and stuff with a little q-tip here just make sure those are nice and clean But pretty much, barrel here is pretty well done. And I won't really be able to show you inside the barrel there probably. It'll probably be very hard for you to see. Um, but you can see the feed ramp here, the breech. Uh, pretty clean for the very short amount of time that we spent on it. And then next, we'll just lay the barrel side. This is the slide that we hit with our brush and a little bit of solvent. I'm just going to grab my microfiber, same as we just did on the barrel. And I'm just going to get in here and wipe all this out. You can see that's, that's all carbon that was burned on from uh, all the back gases that you really get from shooting a suppressor, silencer. Um, on any gun, whether it be pistol, or rifle, or whatever the case may be. So you can see all that just coming off. And we didn't hit this real hard with that with that brush. We spent maybe 30 seconds or so, uh, you know, after we put that solvent on. I just like to put that TCS solvent on and let it set a minute or so. Hit it with our uh, brush. And this stuff comes off pretty easily. And like around here, you're going to get a lot of carbon when you're shooting with a silencer. Um, you can see it cleaned all that off pretty nicely. And down in here as well. And then we want to get in here and clean that stuff out. It's pretty nasty down in there. Now, in tight spaces like you got here where that brush isn't going to reach, uh, what I'll do there is just grab a Q-tip and just hit it with a little solvent here. And just get down in there with your q-tip and you can let this set a little bit and uh, clean it too there's a lot of handguns in there where you're just not going to be able to get in there with a brush and really get all the stuff that you're wanting to get out but little q-tip and be good to
to go. And this is solvent, so um, if there's a little bit of wetness down in there, uh, just let it set for a second before you reassemble, and that'll dry back up. If it was lubricant, it would be really more of a problem, but uh, with the solvent, it's going to dry up pretty quick, and you don't have to worry about um, killing yourself to get every little drop of that solvent out because it's going to dry itself up. But give you a look at it. Uh, slide is pretty well done, and we really did not spend uh, much time. Uh, the cutaway scenes, all I really did was set up for the next step. I mean, that's a that's a clean slide. Let's see if we get the the breach. Now the breach, I could probably uh, hit with that Q-tip and stuff too a little bit, but you can see the shiny metal there. Um, I don't know if it's picking that up on camera or not, but there was all carbon there before. So we obviously got it clean because carbon's gone. All right, man. Last but not least, this is our frame. And like I said, um, I, I don't think I showed it on camera, but I did hit this with a little solvent just because you get a whole lot of blowback, like we said before. So all we're gonna do is just hit this with our brush kind of lightly like we did before on our slide. And you really, you really don't have to go crazy um, getting your guns clean. Like I said, I was really OCD um, <laughs> when I first started shooting. I wanted my guns to look like they'd never been shot after I got done cleaning them. But uh, Really, once you really get into this industry and you're shooting a whole lot, um, it's almost like a badge of honor to, you know, the guns don't have to look perfect anymore. Um, we still have a lot of guns that do uh, for pictures and stuff like that, but the stuff that we shoot all the time, it's a, it's a, it's a gun. So um, it's a workhorse for us. And as long as we clean it good enough to where it functions reliably, uh, I'm pretty happy. But you can see just the carbon rolling off of this thing um, just from the solvent and hitting it with all the brush is doing is loosening uh, unburnt powder and loosening up that carbon a little bit and just like with the slide if you want to get in there with a q-tip and hit these little spots that you can't uh, really get with the towel, it'll pull that stuff right up. But we can see here our frame is once again, ready to go back to the range and do it all over again. So we'll go ahead and reassemble. We're pretty well done here. I'm just gonna actually uh, wipe off these little spots here with my Q-tip and then we'll reassemble. So the maintenance cleaning of this HK USP compact is now complete. Um, I'm going to actually toss up some pictures uh, showing the breach of the barrel here that we cleaned, um, but there was still some carbon built up here. You know, obviously, if you're shooting suppressed, you're going to get a lot of carbon, and there was still a little bit here um, that we couldn't really hit good. So we just took the bore paste and literally um, took the smallest dot. On a cleaning pad and hit it right here and I'll show up the before and after pictures and literally I swiped it with my finger like two or three times and it was completely gone and the, the breach looks or uh, the feed ramp here looks brand new again this stuff is really good guys like I told you I have been looking for a long long time I know there's a lot of new products that hit the market I never have been a bandwagon kind of guy like I said I used hoppies for years I actually still have some up here in my cabinet um, but since I got with these guys, they did a demo for me. Um, I was sold um, down in the description so you can go check out their website and stuff. And there's also a link to them on our website because uh, we did sign them up as a sponsor um, just because we were so impressed with their products. So you guys will be able to get them. I believe Brownells carries their products as well. But uh, 
great stuff. We're just going to go ahead and put this back together. Um, like I said, it does a really, really good job. And we are not spending a whole lot of time cleaning it. I mean, literally, if we weren't filming this, this would have probably been a four or five minute job, something like that. I mean, it was very fast. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. Um, you know, maybe it's seven minutes. I don't know. <laughs> but the, the point being... Um, if you have a lot of guns, you shoot a lot. You don't want to spend time cleaning. You want to spend time shooting. So let's go ahead and throw this back together for you. Well, actually, we're going to left out one of the most important parts. This is their lubricate, uh, lubrication. And this stuff is really good. Uh, the lubricity on this is very, very high. Um, one of the things that they pointed out to us is if you have a lubricant, um, yeah, I don't want to mention other brands or anything like that. And it says shake before use. Uh, you really don't have a lubricant. You got something mixed with water or something like that. This, you don't have to. This stuff, like I said, lubricity in this is very high. And what I'm going to do on here is I'm just going to put a drop here. Down each rail here. And what I'll do usually is I'll just take a Q-tip and I'll run that the length of the rails. And then under here where the barrel hood hits, I'll take the access that I just took off of there and I'll hit that right there. And this is, this is what I do. And then I'll go right here as well. And I'll hit the, the metal portions where the rail slides on here. And we'll hit them back here as well. Um, a lot of times, I'm an I'm a armorer as well. And a lot of times what we get, uh, especially with Glocks, um, is malfunctions are usually caused by over lubrication. So a lot of people put way too much lube on their guns when it's really not necessary. And right here too, I'm actually going to hit this lug real quick with just the access there. You don't need a ton. And then Let's see if I can see what I'm doing here. left hand thread that means you can't screw it on right hand <laughs> no matter how hard you try apparently so we're just going to go ahead line this back up another take down lever here and we'll do a function test And everything is good to go. Just wipe it back down a little bit here. And this one is ready for range day uh, once again. Very clean. It's lubricated. Um, it's ready to go. So stay tuned. Uh, we will be doing another video here showing the TCS uh, manufacturing AR kit and that kit is really really nice these uh these jags that we use here um the ones for the ar work the same way as far as going down the barrel being able to get that back and forth scrubbing action with the bore paste but they also have one that works for the upper receiver for the ar which most of us know is kind of a nightmare to clean the upper receiver your ar it's just a pain in the butt but uh they have solved that as well so thanks for watching guys we really do appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for us if you like the video anyway. If you don't like the video, thumbs down. That's, that's totally fine as well. At least this lets us know uh, what you like and you don't like. But thanks for watching, guys. Like I said, we really do appreciate it. And go down and check out 
TCS Manufacturing down in the description or pop over to our website and uh, click on the link there. But really, really good cleaning stuff. And if you're looking for something that's non-toxic, doesn't smell up your, you know, your house or your garage or shop, whatever the case may be, and something that actually works like the manufacturer says it does, go check them out. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.